What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. This here is somewhat of a relic of this channel. What you're looking at is a Dell Latitude E6420 and this machine was actually featured on this channel about four or so years ago and um, that was after I had done some rather significant upgrades to the system, upgrading RAM and uh, adding USB 3 functionality and things of that nature to the system. Now, four years ago, this was still a pretty capable machine, but how does it stand up in 2020? Let's go ahead and explore how feasible it is to use a system like this that was built all the way back in 2011 in current day. So first off, Let's go through some of the points that are positive, and then we'll go through some of the negative points of this system. So first thing we'll start with is the build quality of this system. It is sporting a mostly magnesium chassis with some plastic components, such as the upper deck, and is extremely solidly built. The uh, hinges on the system are very solid. It sports an aluminum lid, which is very nice and premium uh, looking and feeling. It has a latch system that holds the lid closed, which you don't generally get on any systems anymore. Um, I consider that somewhat of a positive, however, other people may have a different take on that. That's down to personal preference. Now, the keyboard on this system is absolutely phenomenal, in my opinion. It has excellent key travel. The um, characters are well laid out. It has, a, it has a good key layout, good clear printing, and overall is extremely extremely nice to type on it also has dedicated media keys over here to the side which you don't normally get on most systems nowadays they're generally built into the home row um, or the function row i should say another feature that this system has that most laptops except for a few thinkpads um, and a few of the modern dell latitudes have is the uh, track point here in the center which um, now some people like this and other people do not. Um, I am one of those people that absolutely loves the uh, the nub or the track point or whatever you want to call it. Um, now connectivity is another thing that this machine is very strong in. If we take a look on the right hand side of the machine here, you'll notice we have a, an express card slot which I have populated with a USB 3 adapter. That works very well. Um, I have a well, what used to be an optical drive down here, which is now populated by 500 gigabyte hard drive. You have an actual physical wireless switch, which is handy if you go on flights and you need to turn your wireless off. Um, we have a little flap here, which not all of these, these uh, models have these flaps. This is actually, um, this came on the Dell Latitude E6420 um, ATG model which this actually used to be. I have converted it, I've converted the lid to a more modern one because the one that was on it housed a display that was failing and was also very beat up. So I just swapped it out for a standard 6420 lid. I thought it looked better anyway. But under that flap, we have two USB ports and an eSATA port, which is something you norm basically never see anymore. Um, behind that, we have HDMI, a space for a modem, which is a relic from the past that isn't populated on this system. It doesn't really matter anyway. We've got our charging port, our big old battery that's sticking out the back here. Um, we have our ethernet port, and then continuing on to the side here, we have under this flap another USB port, VGA, headphone microphone combo jack, the rather large vent, and a smart card slot, which really nobody outside of uh, business professionals really need that. And even then, it's not all that widely used. On the front, however, you'll notice something that has been a modern and new addition to this laptop. I have added a handle because, yes, the ATG model was able to be equipped with a handle. Now, I found this one for, I think, $13 on eBay, and when I saw it, I couldn't resist picking it up for this laptop, and it's actually quite nice. It's extremely sturdy. It's a cast metal on the side, or stamped, I'm not sure. I think it's, I think it's actual cast and machined metal. 
Um, I believe it to be aluminum, maybe magnesium, I'm not sure. But it's very, very, very sturdy and has a nice rubber grip, which should keep you from dropping it anyway. Um, also, there's a SD card slot on the front. So that's also quite handy. Now, we've gone over most of the good things, and these are all pretty much physical characteristics of this laptop. The not so good things start with the processor. Now we are limited to a dual core chip. So basically the highest end chip this can take is a second gen Core i7 that is dual core and hyper threaded. So two cores, four threads, that's all you're gonna get here. Now for basic tasks, such as word processing, browsing the web, watching videos, that sort of stuff, that's not going to be a huge limitation. However, anything more intensive than that, such as 3D modeling or any light gaming or anything along that nature, video editing, that sort of stuff, you're going to be severely, severely limited by both the age and the core count and frequency of that chip. Um, RAM-wise, these can take up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, so there's not a huge bottleneck there. Um, as far as usability, the screen is not great on these. The display on here is, I believe, a 1366 by 768 720p display, which is far behind any standard laptop nowadays. So it's not fantastic and the colors are not great um it's really just kind of a subpar panel the trackpad on here is tiny it's not a terrible experience but gestures are iffy on it and it's just not great um but yeah performance wise overall they're kind of lacking nowadays you can still get by with it just fine but you will notice some sluggishness as you're browsing more intensive web pages and things along that nature. So Facebook can be a little bit, a little bit taxing for it. Um, just browsing through YouTube, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for pages to load up and images to load in. And it's just not quite as snappy as you would come to expect a modern machine to be. Um, that being said, the real... The real factor here that um, makes these still worth picking up in 2020 is their price. These are absolutely dirt cheap on places such as eBay, from e-waste recyclers. These things can be had for almost nothing. So with the addition of something like a solid state drive and a RAM upgrade, they make a great little knock around laptop. Now, <clears throat> Would I recommend you go out and buy one? Maybe. Now, I've heard there are other displays that you can put in these for a little bit better uh, experience with the panel. And people have speculated whether you can actually put a quad-core chip in these or not. However, none of them from the factory came with a quad-core, as far as I know. So it is possible that you may be able to upgrade one of these even further to a quad-core chip and like something such as a 1080p display. Um, but I would not hold my breath on that. And honestly, for what it is, it's almost better just to take it at face value, maybe put a little bit into upgrading it, but I would not spend a lot of money upgrading one of these systems and trying to make it just a be-all, end-all system, because it really isn't going to be anymore. These were released in 2011. There's just, it's just an old laptop at this point. But I still think they're relevant. I still think they're an excellent system, and even though they are extremely chunky and heavy and bulky for what they are, I mean, look at this thing. It's a beast. They still do okay. And um, performance-wise, we're, we're maybe slacking in a few areas, but again, they're a good daily driver, just knock-around type laptop. Personally, I use mine for some basic network administration type tasks and things around the home um, and a little bit at work, and it's held up extremely well for that. Um, it's a good utility laptop just because of the sheer amount of ports and connectivity on it and the fact that it still has, again, a physical Ethernet port and things like that, which you don't generally see on newer laptops. 
So it definitely has some use there. Anyway guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more content. As you see behind there, we've got another Dell Latitude, an even older one that I will be taking a look at here in the near future. Um, we'll be seeing how well the Core 2 Duo stacks up in 2020. I would not be surprised if it was not well. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that if that's something you're interested in watching. And until next time, guys, take it easy.